it was the first weekend in February. A recent visit from the polar vortex had left us colder than cold, and when the weather flipped from negative 30 to positive 30, we ran for the hills and valleys of Forestville State Park in search of trout. Sometimes, when a person is presented with an opportunity to catch trout for the first time in months, they move with such haste that they forget their waders. Each year, there comes a dark time in the middle of winter when I wonder if I'll ever be warm again. But despite the gray and the cold, the midges were alive. And with the prospect of trout on the line, we were too. Perhaps the winter trout is a more discerning trout. Maybe it's that their eyesight grows sharper when the sun isn't shining. In any case, they were skeptical of what we had to offer. The Kinnikinnik and the sunshine called to us in early April. We were looking for signs of life and found them. <laughs> Holding steady against the river's springtime rush, we saw them. Trout were there. Perhaps it was that our flies tasted bad. Maybe the eagle warned them away. More likely, the rusty casts of two springtime anglers left them all laughing in their riffles. Thoughts of a curse had begun to cross our minds, and a quiet nervousness grew in our hearts. Certainly, this trip to the Rush River would lay our worries to rest. All signs pointed to a brilliant day of catching trout. How could we not, when the river banks were crowded with blooms and the birds were singing with such joyous abandon? Yes, we could see them everywhere around us, around each bend, in every perfect pool. Our casts were good, and the fish were nibbling at our flies. It's possible that the riverside blossoms and birdsong may have distracted us from the task at hand. It's possible that the fish were onto our tricks. We caught no trout that day and left the river with a snail shell and a piece of glass. The curse works in mysterious ways. An opportunistic afternoon on Seven Mile Creek marked the beginning of summer, but no trout. In the first weeks of May, the Rush River welcomed us back with open arms. Green was everywhere, and memories of winter were faint whispers in the backs of our minds. 
We swam in pools of emerald green. Perhaps the curse had run out. Perhaps there was no curse at all. Then again, it's possible that the curse claimed its final toll that day, a payment taken of flesh and blood. There are some things we don't know, and one thing we do. A brown trout, caught in cool waters under a canopy of green, is a good trout indeed.